Hi, it's Katrina from Open Pit Minds that astronauts can see from space to trying to journey to the center of the Earth. Here are 10 of the world's deepest and largest holes. Number 10. Kalgoorlie Super Pit Commonly just known as the Super Pit, the Femiston Open Pit in Western Australia is the world's second largest open-cut gold mine and was surpassed only as recently as 2016. It's so massive, it's visible from space. The canyon-sized pit is 3.5 kilometers long, 1.5 kilometers wide, and over 600 meters deep. It's made up of a complex system of underground networks, which started out as separate, individually owned mines that were eventually consolidated by Kalgoorlie Consolidated Gold Mines. The mine's history dates back to 1893, when a prospector named Patty Hannon discovered over 100 ounces of the precious metal at the site. Hannon's discovery sparked Western Australia's gold rush period, as well as the discovery of one of the world's richest gold deposits known as the Golden Mile. Since then, over 58 million ounces of gold have been excavated at the super pit. The mine remains in operation today and the pit is still expanding as around 15 million tons of rock are excavated annually. Number 9. Beamish Early last year, scientists drilled the deepest hole ever made in Western Antarctica in a British Antarctic Survey monitored project called Bed Access Monitoring and Ice Sheet History, or Beamish. The project was 20 years in the making when in January 2019, the team began drilling into the Rutford ice stream in Western Antarctica using a high-pressure hot water drill, which melted through the ice with water heated to a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. They continuously drilled for 63 hours before breaking through the base of the ice at a depth of 2,152 meters. Then the researchers threaded special instruments through the hole to measure water pressure, ice temperature, and the extent of any ice deformation that has occurred. When it came to gathering this information, time was of the essence as the hole completely refroze within days. These recordings will help scientists better understand the melting of the planet's polar ice sheets, which has accelerated at an unprecedented rate in recent years, as well as what to expect in terms of rising sea levels and how much ice will ultimately melt. They hope to learn when the Antarctic ice sheet last melted and the role sediments and water play in moving ice streams toward the ocean. So far, experts have realized that the polar ice sheets are melting faster than they previously thought. They believe that this could trigger an irreversible sea level rise that could continue for many centuries, according to the Beamish Project's official website. Gleaning more information about the poorly understood history of ice sheets and their movement and activity will hopefully reduce the scientific community's uncertainty regarding the melting polar caps and rising sea levels. And now for number 8, but first a quick shout out to True Scarvenger, who apparently commented for the first time in their life. Glad you love the videos! And also to Hanif Huzaidi, glad you like the intro! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and let me know if you would like a shout out! Number 8. Chikyu in 2019, so really recently, engineers aboard the specialized Japanese drill ship Chikyu drilled over two miles into the ocean floor, where the Philippine Sea Plate slides beneath the Eurasian Plate, causing deadly earthquakes every 100 to 150 years. Why were they drilling there? Learning what's beneath the Earth's surface can lead to incredible scientific discoveries, including a better understanding of our changing planet, and can also lead fortune seekers to highly profitable and in-demand raw materials. The borehole claimed the world record for the deepest offshore hole ever drilled for scientific purposes. To the disappointment of researchers, the achievement came up short of the original goal of reaching a 5,200-meter depth where the two tectonic plates meet because the drill hole continuously collapsed. After nearly a decade of working on the project, the team gave up. Nobu Eguchi, the director of operations at the Yokosuka-based Institute for Marine Earth Exploration and Engineering, or MAR-E3, which operates Chikyu, referred to the endeavor as a continuous six-month nightmare. The next step is for experts to figure out what went wrong. Chikyu is currently the only scientific marine drilling vessel capable of reaching the depth where the tectonic plates converge, so the responsibility of resolving the issue and ultimately achieving the original goal more or less falls on the shoulders of the ship's crew and researchers. They're expecting it to possibly take dozens of years and cost up to $1 billion. Number 7. KTB Borehole 
It took eight years to make this hole. German scientists carried out the German Continental Deep Drilling Program, or the KTB Borehole for short, in northern Bavaria from 1987 to 1995. They drilled to just under 30,000 feet, nearly six miles into the Earth, surpassing seismic plates and hitting temperatures of 600 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, the researchers ran out of money. Thankfully, the project still taught them a lot about seismic activity and the composition of the Earth's crust. From 1996 to 2001, the Super Deep Borehole served as a seismic deep observatory for the German Research Center for Geosciences. Dutch artist Lottie Gaven lowered a microphone into the hole in 2013, and it picked up a rumbling noise that scientists couldn't explain. Gaven simply called it the sound of the Earth. The derrick, or lifting device, used for the project was among the largest pieces of machinery of its type in the world. It remains at the site today, where it has become a tourist attraction. Would you visit the site? Let me know in the comments! Number 6. Deepwater Horizon In 2009, the British Petroleum BP-owned offshore drilling rig Deepwater Horizon drilled a borehole that reached a vertical depth of 10,683 meters, or about 5 miles, setting a world record for the deepest oil well ever. The hole was drilled under 1,259 meters of water in the Tiber oil field at Keithley Canyon in the Gulf of Mexico, roughly 400 kilometers southeast of Houston, Texas. It led to a massive pool of crude oil containing up to 6 billion barrels worth of the liquid gold. Deepwater Horizon's glory came just a year before the rig was lost in a tragic explosion, which was visible from 40 miles away and killed 11 crew members. The incident proved costly not only in human lives, but financially as well. Compensation for violations of the U.S. Clean Water Act and various other lawsuits ran into the billions for both BP and the offshore drilling contractor TransOcean, serving as a reminder that while digging holes may seem like a fairly harmless activity from the outside looking in, it can be deadly. Number 5. Z44 Chavo Well Over the course of just two months in 2011, Exxon Neftegas, a Russian subsidiary of ExxonMobil, drilled the Odoptu OP-11 well at the Odoptu oil field in the waters off Russia's Far East, roughly 5 to 7 miles northeast of Sakhalin Island. The endeavor was part of the Sakhalin 1 project, which is run by a consortium of oil companies and affiliates from Russia, India, and Japan. There's a lot going on there. And it consists of three offshore oil fields, which have yielded hundreds of millions of barrels of oil for export thus far. The Adoptu OP-11 oil well hit a depth of 12,345 meters, or about 12.4 kilometers, surpassing the previous world record holder for the deepest man-made hole, which was none other than the Kola Super Deep Borehole that I will tell you about. Because the Adoptu OP-11 well did not go straight into the earth but was drilled at a diagonal, it also set a world record with its horizontal reach of 11,475 meters. The following year, the company outdid itself by once again drilling the world's deepest ever oil extraction well and deepest man-made hole, known as the Z44 Chavo Well. Also located in the waters off eastern Russia, it reaches a depth of 40,604 feet or 12,376 meters. To put things into perspective, this is 15 times the height of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, which towers over the Dubai skyline at an astonishing height of 2,722 feet or 829.7 meters. Number 4. Chukikamata Copper Mine Chukikamata Copper Mine in northern Chile claims the world title when it comes to measuring size in terms of excavated volume. In other words, the amount of material dug out. About 300 billion cubic feet, or nearly 8.5 billion cubic meters of material has been removed from the pit over the years. The pit is 2.7 miles long, 1.9 miles wide, and over 3,000 feet deep. It is the world's second deepest copper mine. The Chukicamata Copper Mine is located 770 miles north of Chile's capital city, Santiago, and sits at 9,350 feet above sea level. Mining at the site began in the late 19th century. The Chilean state-owned copper mining company, Codelco, has owned and operated the mine since 1915. By the 1990s, it was the world's largest producing mine. While it's since taken a back seat to other record holders, the Chukicamata Copper Mine is still in use. In 2016, construction began on the planned multi-billion dollar conversion from open pit mining to underground operations. 
Underground mining activities began in April 2019, and the project is expected to extend the mine's lifespan by about 40 years. Number 3. Kola Super Deep Borehole At a depth of 40,230 feet or 12,262 meters, the Kola Super Deep Borehole is one of the world's deepest man-made holes, and for several years it held the number one spot. Although the hole is only 9 inches in diameter, it reaches a little over 7.5 miles below the Earth's surface, deeper than the Challenger Deep Trench in the Pacific Ocean, which is the world's lowest known natural point. Russian scientists began digging the hole in 1970 on the country's Kola Peninsula, and it became the deepest hole on Earth about 20 years later. They stopped drilling in 1992 due to the unexpectedly high 356 degree Fahrenheit temperature they encountered, rather than the 212 degrees they had planned for. At such a high temperature, digging becomes more difficult because the material is more liquid and the intense heat wreaks havoc on the equipment, according to Benjamin Andrews, a research geologist and curator at the Smithsonian's National Rock and Ore Collection. He likened maintaining a bore in such an environment to trying to keep a pit in the center of a pot of hot soup. When the team stopped digging, the Kola Super Deep Borehole was halfway or less to the Earth's mantle. A real-life journey to the center of the Earth, but not quite. In 2008, workers sealed the hole shut and officially abandoned the site. One of the researchers' most important discoveries was the presence of microscopic plankton fossils about four miles down. Number 2. Lake Vostok I told you about Western Antarctica, but drilling the deepest ever hole in Eastern Antarctica involved a fear lengthier undertaking than the Beamish project. On January 10, 2013, after 20 years of drilling and reaching a depth of 11,175 feet, a Russian research team reached the freshly frozen surface of Lake Vostok, the largest of Antarctica's 400 ancient subglacial lakes. Lake Vostok is a freshwater lake located beneath Russia's Vostok Station and 13,100 feet or 4,000 meters under the surface of the central East Antarctic ice sheet. When scientists accessed the lake's frozen surface in early 2013, they gathered an ice sample. Unfortunately, however, unfrozen water from beneath the ice rushed upward, causing the sample to mix with kerosene and freon, which the team was using to prevent the borehole from freezing. In early 2015, the researchers drilled a new clean borehole through the ice and into Lake Vostok, reaching a depth of 12,365 feet. This time, they successfully gathered an unspoiled sample from the lake, which has been covered in ice and untouched by sunlight for at least 15 million years. As early as the 1990s, scientists discovered microbial evidence in samples of accretion ice from directly above Lake Vostok. More recently, they found DNA snippets from various single-celled organisms. Further analysis ultimately revealed that there is a diverse array of microbes and even some multicellular organisms in Lake Vostok. In other words, evidence of life in a place where not too long ago, scientists thought it couldn't possibly exist. This can give us an idea of what life might be like on other planets. Who knows what could be lurking below the icy oceans in the universe. Number 1. Bingham Canyon Mine Also known as Kennecott Copper Mine, the Bingham Canyon Mine is an open-pit copper mining operation located in Harriman, Utah, southwest of Salt Lake City, and owned by the British-Australian Rio Tinto Group. It's the world's largest human-made excavation and open-pit mine, and has produced more refined copper than any other mine to the tune of over 20 million tons. Two brothers named Sanford and Thomas Bingham first discovered copper ore at the site in 1848, but their leader, Brigham Young, advised against embarking upon any mining operations. Mining activities began in 1906, and since then the pit has become over 3,182 feet deep and two and a half miles wide, occupying a total area of three square miles. Today the mine operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The Bingham Canyon Mine has brought more financial wealth to the state of Utah than any other company. On the other hand, some environmental specialists have argued that the mine has adverse effects on local fish and wildlife habitats, reminding us that in one way or another, everything comes at a cost and leaving us with the question, is it worth it? The question of workers' safety also comes into play. In April 2013, the mine experienced a massive landslide during which up to 2.5 cubic feet of rock and dirt tumbled down its walls. 
Thankfully, nobody was hurt because the mine's operators anticipated this possibility due to its steep walls and had previously installed an interferometric radar system to monitor its stability. Good thing. Later that year, 100 workers were evacuated in anticipation of a second slide, and there were no injuries. In addition to being a copper mine, the site is also a tourist attraction, with shuttles to and from the site every half hour during the day, a walk-up ticket counter, and even a gift shop. Have you ever visited a major mining site? Which one? Let me know about your experience in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!